Hi guys, how are you doing? Um, I've decided to do a very, very quick video on two points I want to raise on squats and stuff like deadlifts. So the hope is, quick pointers, a couple of minutes long, hopefully you'll get the message. Okay, so the first one is relating to squats and squat depth um, and how to achieve a, a better squat depth. So someone asked me last week, um, I used to squat, they said oh, I used to squat um, quite upright torso and this block I've been kind of squatting more with a bit of a, more of a forward lean. Um, and the question was which one's correct. So there is no uh, correct way of doing it. So it will depend on on you, basically. Um, so generally speaking, it's very generally, but usually shorter people find it they can uh, get squat squat a bit easier uh, and a bit lower with a more upright torso. Um, and generally speaking, really tall people or people with really long femurs tend to need to take a much more of a, a, a lean. A sort of a, like a lean into their squat um, to allow them to get more depth. So, what what is true across the board, in my opinion, and what we're trying to really get folk to do at the boot camp is to squat deep, basically to, to get their to get their hip, as we've said, to get the hip below the knee. Um, but there's there's more than one way of doing that, and and you don't need to keep a really upright torso. Um, I just I personally do squat with quite an upright torso. Yeah, even though I'm quite tall, I'm not massively tall, but um, and that's just because I've got I'm quite lucky and that I've got quite uh, good hip mobility, but I've also got good ankle mobility, um, hamstring mobility, and shoulder mobility. That's another issue. Um, so my point is, you can squat differently um, to achieve the same depth. It doesn't it doesn't matter, or it's it's not a, a massive issue. But what I will say for everyone, okay, and this is the point I wanted to cover, was that the the squatter the the squatter the deeper you squat. Generally speaking, hopefully you'll be able to see my feet here. Generally speaking, the lower you squat, right, what tends to happen is people's people tend to collapse in on themselves. Like they're, they're, this is called their knees come in. It's called valgus knee, and generally they just kind of everything sort of closes in. So if you've got really if you've got poor ankle mobility as well, what happens is you squat down really low. Is that this, the, the more the, the more depth you try to achieve, the more pressure you're putting through, or the more you're testing your mobility, basically, and the, the, the ankles can sometimes roll over if they're tight. So ankle mobility is one reason which will which will prevent you from squatting low. Um, so that's one thing to look out for. If, if these if these ankles are caving in, that's 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 something you need to be aware of, and also knees caving in. Okay, so. This is why squatting deep is quite good, uh, or is, is a very good thing to become good at, because you can't you can't do it uh, uh, efficiently and well without adequate mobility through your hips and through your ankles and through your calves, uh, which are all kind of connected anyway, and even through your, your 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 chest and shoulders to a degree. So it's almost like a good test of your overall mobility. Okay, so that's why we ask folk to improve their mobility and depth and build their strength on top of that um, and not to chase the weight too quickly. So when you're squatting low, I want everyone, everyone needs to be aware that of their, ankle, of their ankles. As you come down, make sure that they're not rolling in the way. So in other words, try and make sure the weight transfers to round, round up more evenly across the whole foot. But in other words, if you're caving in at the feet here, then you need to think about trying to push the weight out, out a wee bit across the side of the feet. And what that will also help do is bring the knees out okay, in line with the feet, but ultimately, um, in order for that to happen, okay, in order for the knees to come out, you, you're going to have to recruit the big abductor muscles at the side of the glutes, so these big, this big area here, right, these are called your abductors, um, and that's, they're responsible for literally abducting, taking away, so t taking the, the leg away from the, the centre of the body, so in other words, when you're squatting deep, your, your body's trying to find the path of least resistance, it's going to collapse in, in itself um, as a structure, as a skeleton. So your job is to recruit your muscles to prevent that from happening and to keep it keep a solid integrity basically through your structure. And that's where the abductors come in. So in other words, you should become more aware of those muscles, the abductor muscles at the side of your glutes, the deeper you squat and the better you squat with good with good knee position or and good foot position. So uh, in other words, in order to come down nice and deep, okay, with with your feet evenly balanced, of the, with the weight of your body evenly balanced through your whole foot and not coming in the way, and in order for your knees to stay out over the line of your toes, as you come up especially, that, so it's a lot of time it'll, on the way up, it'll keep, people will keep in, you need to concentrate on pushing, really pushing out the way through these big muscles here at the side of your glutes. Okay, so next time you squat, I want you to really think about that. So on your way up, push 
through here, through the side of your bum, to really transfer the weight through the glutes as well. And that's when the abductors really play a pivotal role in squatting, okay? Um, the, when the range of motion is really deep and you're trying to keep the integrity of the muscle. So when it comes to glute work, um, yeah, isolating it, isolating these muscles can help. Um, and then it should manifest itself as well uh, within the squat and eventually just doing really quality deep squats with good form will really, really work those abductor muscles as well as other parts of the leg. Um, a good wee basic one to do in the house to, to get the abductors firing is just that, okay, just standing on one leg and doing that. If you find you can only get to about here, then that's an indication that you need to do this exercise because it's an indication that your abductors aren't very good at abducting, right? So if you think about it, abduction, take, to take away, that is, that is the purpose of those muscles. So that movement there, if you're trying to come up and down, if you can get right up and right down, um, and just do maybe 20 to 30 reps per leg for a couple of sets, that will really fire up those muscles, you'll start to become more aware of them. So that when you go back into the deep squat, these are gonna uh, start to fire better and hold your knees in the correct alignment better. Now obviously there's more than there's more than just the abductors that are responsible for knee alignment, but this, the purpose of this video is just to cover to cover that basically. Uh, so this is frozen slightly, not frozen. So yeah, so that's it, just a quick video on on the abductors and their role. Uh, I think I said at the start I was going to mention, I'll just quickly mention it, stiff leg -like deadlifts, okay. So um, obviously there's your stiff leg -like deadlift. Okay, oh my posture's a bit dodgy there. Right, so that's the movement there. So you just slide the bar down. Main thing is to remember, keep your neck in neutral. So you're trying to look down, not, 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 not up. Um, but also you're trying to keep your hips back, so you're trying to keep the weight onto here, right? But that sometimes if you're doing that too much, what will happen is you'll end up leaning back and your toes actually always come off the floor. I've noticed that a few times. So don't get me wrong, it's quite useful to encourage folk to 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 push through their heels and midfoot a bit better by asking them to curl their toes up, right? But at the same time, if you ask them to do that too much, they end up leaning back and then they transfer too much of the weight through the lower back. So what I would suggest you do the next time you're trying these, if you feel you're not really necessarily feeling it that much in your hamstrings, or if you feel slightly hurt in your lower back, what I would suggest you do is get into the position you can get into, and then slightly just sway forward like that. Okay, so let's suppose when you're stiff like deadlifting like this, sway forward a wee bit, so that now the weight is going centrally right down the middle the middle of your feet, so through the ball of the foot, primarily through the ball of the foot and the heel, but not the toe. So that's why we sometimes say, uh, for, to beginners, sometimes it can be helpful to curl your toes up, but that doesn't mean lean back to the extent where there's no weight going through the ball of your foot. And that's, I think, sometimes what's happening. That's what I've noticed in a few folk recently. They're leaning back too far. So all you need to do is get do your deadlift as normal, and then when you get down there, just gently rock forward a wee bit until you're aware that the weight has been distributed through the balls of your feet and the heel, okay, so both, not just the heel, okay, so hopefully there's two wee basic tips, eight and a half minutes long, that's not too bad, is it? <laughs> not for me, anyway, right.